Hi, I'm Prano Bailey-Bond and I am the director and co-writer of Censor. Hi, my name is Neve Alger and this is Censor. Censor is set in 1985 against the backdrop of social hysteria surrounding video nasties. Um, so essentially this is kind of when uh, the birth of VHS happened in the UK. There were a bunch of, you know, horror films that weren't getting screened in cinemas because uh, they weren't being passed for cinema. So as soon as VHS happened, these horror films could go direct to the home where anybody can watch them, they can rewind and rewatch them again and again and again. And there was a huge panic around what these films were going to do to our minds, uh, to society, whether they were going to turn us all into murderers and psychopaths. And then I started to think about this character, this um, film censor who was watching these violent images all day and perhaps what if they started to have a complicated conversation with their own moral compass? What if they started to think that maybe they were deep down a terrible person and something was going to awaken that part of them? I was lucky enough that I sat down with censors and actually talked to them and... Um, it was just fascinating to think that you could spend so much time within a dark room looking at such intense um, videos for such a long period of time and how that would actually have a psychological effect on someone. But interestingly, the conversations that what we really actually focused on was the psychological state that Enid is on. And for me, it was important that the fact that she had this deep-rooted childhood trauma and that was so deeply seeded within her that as it manifests into adolescence, how that could change a person. And what I felt was this was a this is a woman who was actually dealing with post-traumatic stress disorder. I mean, what is it with these directors? Male inadequacy, revenge catharsis. Didn't that get to you? Some of those scenes were so excessive. Just focus on getting it right. Don't really think about anything else. She's becoming more and more single-minded about what is happening or what might have happened in her past and what that means is happening uh, in the present. So that's representing her um, sort of psychological state, this idea of a uh, single-minded woman getting closer and closer to something very deep and dark. We specifically talked about um, the visuals of the character and what she wears and kind of goes from this incredibly upright and proper person to someone who's kind of hunched over and um, collapsing in on herself. And so we looked at, like, costuming and the idea that these glasses present a mask for the character. It is actually physically filtering out what she sees and we chose very specific moments in the script of where the glasses were going to come off. We we kind of have Enid at the beginning of the film. She very much belongs to the world that she's in. Her costume is the greys and blues of the censor's office and she kind of belongs to that world. And then as the uh, film progresses, we go into her dreams where we start to introduce pinks and purples and it gets a little bit more Argento and Suspiria-esque. And when we come back out of that world, we sort of bring a little bit of Enid's dream colour into the census office. So you might start to introduce the pinks and purples in the background for the first time. Enid? Also, there's a point in the film where she starts to break away colour-wise from the, the worlds that she's in and she starts to not quite fit in visually. Look at me. Neve has this um, incredible range and where she goes in the latter part of the film emotionally, you know, she, she just blew me away. She's a coiled spring at the beginning and then she shoots us into this emotional stratosphere by the end. It was a character that you go home with every night and I, I like to think that like I'm good at like leaving them behind and on set, but this was one, Enid was the one that really got under my skin.